In tonight's coal house, tempers flare at Stack Square. And he can walk off if he wants to walk off. Spike brat. There's a munitions milestone. What a wonderful job. Oh, we did it together. We did it. <laughs> and panic underground. So we need to get out. Hey, gas is going to fill up the floor. Don't rush, but don't hang about. Three 2008 families have stepped back in time to experience life in the South Wales coal valleys of 1944. In cramped mining cottages with few mod cons, they're adjusting to life on the wartime home front. <laughs> How about that for sexy legs? There have been painful lessons for the boys at the mine. Oh, I smashed my hand against the rock. And more evacuees have arrived from England. Welcome to Wales. They've all signed up to do their wartime duty. At Six Stack Square, the Tranter Davis family, five daughters and two evacuees. At number seven, the Griffiths family, a new evacuee Andrew from Essex. And at number eight, the Paisies, with evacuees Roberta and Leah. Stack Square has also welcomed four young men. Rory, Chaz, Charlie and Jack have been drafted in to help down the mine. The four cottages are now home to 26 people. And at the Paisies, it's the first morning for evacuees Leah and Roberta. It was work. I slept well. Morning. Oh, heck. Oh. Got to put more work done on that. Next door at the Griffiths, there's one extra mouth to feed as well. Evacuee Andrew. Yeah. I usually have Cheerios with lots of milk. Porridge this morning, do you like honey? Yeah. Because that's what we're having. 1944 breakfast might take a bit of getting used to. It's hot. Mm. So did you boys have a nice surprise when you woke up this morning? At number five, mm. the Bevan boys are waking up to biscuits. Good man Rory here made us some shortbread. Two and a half hours. Really? Yeah, because those scales are awful. But with a whole week's butter ration used in the recipe, this sweet treat could leave a bitter taste. Today, the Bevin boys face their first shift underground. Right, thanks for having there, boys. Your job, I should in this pit, is to keep my men supplied underground. Any messing about, straight back up the pit when you're out. The boys have no experience of underground work, so it's a first step into the dark and the unknown. I'm excited about going in there, but yet I'm a bit scared. I'm working in a tight space I'm not really used to, so I'm just giving my best shot and trying my best, I guess. I don't think it'll be that much of hard work. But as Chaz goes deeper into the mine, he's not quite so confident. So you're not natural about being underground? Yeah, I know. In the slightest. Watch your heads. It's a little bit more, <clears throat> more real now, isn't it? Yeah. Like we're here. Get in, gather round. Show your lamps up. You see what the men do with timber? They can't open up ground if they haven't got timbers in. We can have all the coal we want in front of us, but if they haven't got timber behind them, they can't take that coal out. That's what you are here for. If they don't stop and I don't get coal, I don't make money and their wages get cut. All right. We seem to have swelled in our numbers. It's the first day in a new school for evacuees Roberta and Andrew. They're rather grubby. I slipped over. Why not you have washed your hands since? Make sure you do, please. But one pupil's missing. New evacuee Leah is off school and down in the dumps. It's not a very good start because I've only just come and the bed broke last night, so wasn't, that wasn't a good time to add to being sick as well. I don't know whether it's uh, just the upset of arriving and uh, being away from her family or 
whether she's got some kind of thing, viral thing, I don't know. In 1944, a range of ages would often be taught in the same classroom, doing different levels of work. Stop, 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 stop. Three times table. One three is three, two three is six, three three is But for four-year-old you and Paisy, laughing's much more fun than learning. So let's read through. Rosie, can you read? Yes. At the munitions factory, working quickly and accurately is a challenge for Mandy and Laura. Pressure is on between us. Try not to get distracted by Mrs. Griffiths. I was looking too far down. I was like that and then you'd lick me in the eye. I thought I'd a very good day, am I? Parachute problems are plaguing Annie Starr too. <laughs> Whatever I try to do, it just goes wrong. So. I'm doing it back to front, I'm doing it upside down, and I wouldn't be surprised if I could do it inside out. <laughs> it just doesn't work. Mrs. Jones? Eleven. It's all over. Oh, what's happened there? Do you know when I leave here, if I ever see another sewing machine in my life, it will be far too soon. <laughs> when I shall be ripping down the curtains and making dresses for my little children. Underground. It's a bumpy ride for Charlie and Rory. Fingers. Fingers. It's really knackering, but it's just the uh, height and everything. It's just getting used to it. It's just... But yeah, it's definitely not at all what I expected. You still move in the same road, Timber? Yes, Mr. Blanford. That's all you've done. That's your shift's work, but eh? Yes, Mr. Blanford. So my man can't go and cut coal. Yes, Get Mr. some shape to you. Those men are down there waiting. Get on with it. Yes, you can't go on the face and cut any coal because there's no supplies down there for you. Ben boys have let you down. You can't earn production bonus today, so to cover your basic wages, you might as well come in here and shovel some muck to get this road well. What's the problem with the Bevin boys, Mr. I'm full. Why can't they be on top of their work then? They've come in, they learn their job, and it'll take them a little while to get on top of things. So therefore, we've got to suffer with the bonus? Yeah. There's little sympathy for the novices. There was often conflict between the experienced miners and the young men known as Bevin boys, sent by the government to work in the mines. The Bevin boys are stopping me getting any more money than the basic wage. It's a big blow for me, because I'm a bit worried about the money already, and now we've got two evacuees as well. We'll come in here, ready to do a good day's work. Hopefully, uh, get a bit of bonus on top, and then that's gone through the windows. In a fairly good speed here, eh? even though we're on the third. Jack and Chaz are blissfully unaware of rumblings underfoot. They're more interested in rumours of a romance brewing between Annie Starr and a particular Bevan boy. Rory has had a little bit of romance on the square. This and week. he's not the only one. There's another certain female, isn't there, mate? Aye. He has been very gay. Up and personal with the neighbours. The girl next door. They're all lovely, but there's no romance. <laughs> there is no romance. No romance. All the talk of romance has even got the married women of Stack Square considering their options. If I wasn't married, and I was a lot younger, no, see, I didn't mean to take any little things into consideration. This is Charlie. Charlie's nice and quiet. Charlie, I think yeah. Jack. Jack is so sweet. Concentrate a bit more on the work. Oh, damn, The Inquisition continues at tea break. Annie, what time did you come in on Friday night? Hang on now, what time did you come in on either Friday night or Saturday night? What time? <laughs> Half past one in the morning. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is Griffiths. Back at their machines, the inspector wants a word. What a wonderful job. Oh, we did it together. We did it. <laughs> <laughs> we have a parachute. Oh, we have a parachute. I think it's good that they finished one, but I'm on my last scene of my own, and they've shared theirs, so... <laughs> it's a big skirt. We've made a skirt. <laughs> <laughs> the 
Uh, should we chuck it from the top of the building and see if it works? <laughs> well, I tell you what, I'll tie you <laughs> to it <laughs> okay. and then throw you off. <laughs> Back at Stack Square, Natalie Paisy has some serious accusations about her husband. I'm at danger level with my knickers because he's been wearing them. So I'm going to have. It's because they're really big. They're like boxer shorts. And the boxer shorts he's been given are a bit too airy. I went to the drawer and I said, Steve, I have no knickers. It's because I'm wearing them. <laughs> He'll never live it down. The end of a hard shift and the men aren't happy. What have you lazy swines been up to today? Lazy guys? swines. Where's the other two? What have you been doing now? Listen, so we're not pleased with the performance today, boys. Because our money is down, we've had us working on the add-in instead. You've got to pull your finger out. Well, well it's our first day and everything. Well, it's, it's got to be sorted out, boys, because... Uh, what were you guys like when you first went down? I'm sure we were a bit quicker than what you boys are. I know it's new to you. Yeah. But you've got to make an effort, boys. Yeah, we will. OK? Well, as far as I'm concerned, if they're as good as they think they are, we're stopping some of them from coming up and doing some of the work from our side. Teaching us a couple of things, you know. They're new. Travelled all the way down from England. They don't know any better. So hopefully now we've had a little word with them, they'll pull this off, up. They all have plenty to mull over on the way home. Hard and fast. That's the thing. We're going to be happy at all, boys. Butcher arrives with some very special cuts. Today we've got sheep's liver, sheep's hearts, and some tongues. Mm. They aren't to everyone's taste. Ah, what are we doing? <laughs> oh, no, 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 not even I could do that one. No. <laughs> it's a tongue. It's a tongue, look. But the butcher's found at least one customer. I am going to have a tongue. Oh, no. Nah. She's what million. are you going to do with that? She is In 1944, offal was cheap and unrationed, a staple choice for the ingenious housewife. Oh. Oh. The skin will peel off. When you always turn there, the skin there, yeah. the skin there will peel off. Oh, God. <laughs> See, how good a wife am I? Yes, very good wife. It's not such a hit with the kids. Oh. This is the heart lock, right? Of what? Of a sheep. A sheep? Yeah, it's a sheep's heart, that is. And your mum, your mum, your, your mum doesn't want a crooked look. Lovely. Yeah, that's... You got a nice liver look? Oh, lovely, nice. Lovely liver. Yeah, nice liver. The uh, there's a tongue look. Oh, there's a tongue there look. Oh. Oh. But in the Paisy household, tongue is surprisingly popular. You want to have one? That's nice. Cheeky. <laughs> Tonight it's weekly home guard training for the men, and they're learning the art of semaphore. Semaphore was first used in the Middle Ages, the signal from castle to castle. And you simply move your arm up, around, swap over the flags and go down. Semaphore signalling and Morse code was a key part of home guard training. Any questions? I just don't find Right on. Give me about ten minutes, quarter of an hour. Hopefully I'll uh, master it. Stack Square Battalion have a lot to learn. I think I'd be quicker to run the half a mile and <laughs> get the message by mouth. Under 1944 blackout rules, no light could shine from a house at night. Even the glow of a cigarette was banned and government posters encouraged people to eat carrots to help their nighttime vision. At the Griffiths house, the message isn't getting through and the air raid warden is on the prowl. It's me. Oh. <laughs> you had the door open with the lights displayed. I was just over there and I saw you. So I'm going to have to find you 15 shillings. I issued all the warnings that I have to issue. Regulations are regulations, you see, Mrs. Griffiths. There's only a bit of bedding, boys. <laughs> 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 shillings. Thank you. I told him, put the lights up before you go out. And what does madam do? Walks out with the light on. I was only going to help the bevin boys. Best if you left the bevin boys to fend themselves. It's cost us 15 shillings. <laughs> Why are you laughing then? Listen, because it's stupid. I work hard enough for you for that blooming 15 bob anyway. Yes, so didn't it? God's sakes.
Next morning, relations are still frosty at the Griffiths. I haven't slept all night. I've been up, I've had my bath, washed my hair, because I haven't slept. No bonus this week, because the Bevin boys let us down yesterday. Fine, 15 shillings. 15 shillings out of my pay. So I'll be working for nothing today. So hence me and the husband aren't talking, because he shouted at me. So what can you do? At the Tranter Davises, Annie Starr seems to be making an extra effort with her appearance, doing her best with limited 1944 cosmetics. Considering the amount of makeup that okay. I wear in 2008 <coughs> isn't really that much. So the amount of makeup I've got in 1944 is quite shocking because this makeup is rubbish, it's orange, and I have no mascara, which is why I'm putting Vaseline on my eyes. So it's pretty rubbish. <laughs> so you just look orange with greasy eyes. <laughs> Maybe she's trying to impress a certain Bevin boy. I'm hungry. It's 8.15, Jacko. Really? Yeah. The bus to work leaves in 20 minutes. Did Rose be in? Yeah, Rose came in, but only not once and then left. Finally prizing themselves out of bed, the boys catch the bus just in time. the mine, Mr. Blandford is waiting with a warm welcome. Are you boys ready to go on the ground? Mr. Blandford. Why have you got your laptops on then? Who hasn't got a pit pad? I haven't because they got three out and then added one to each. Did you put all four away? Yeah. Are I, you sure? Yeah, I put mine away. So why did I find this lying around the pit then? That must be someone else. If you lose it, you'll be using your hands. Do you understand? However inexperienced Bevin boys were, mine owners had little choice. They needed manpower, whatever the quality. Come around, boys! I walk around. I want you, Ben boys, to partner off with the three colliers. We're going to move this. Um, this is coal. Um, we're going to cut out the bottom and we're going to pass it down to the belt and check it onto the belt. Doing my back now. Right. I can't stand it's just bending over constantly, so it is strained, I guess. And a bit sore. But the mine work could be a breeze compared with rising tensions at Stack Square. In the rush to get to work this morning, the boys left their cottage in a mess, and Rose Griffiths is on the warpath. They are really and truly in bad looks with me. I told them that I would do their breakfast dishes for them. If nothing was left from the nights before around the place. Hi. That was left. Whole table left. Look where they've stuck their meat. There you go. If they got money to throw away, that's fine. They could be full of bleeding dust now as well. The men are taking a breather. A news has reached Geraint that his stepdaughter may be getting close to a certain Bevin boy. Love is in the air. Is there something going on between you and Well, I, I don't think there would be. Um, he, he's all right, but, you know, he raises my class war hackles. That's the thing with the boys, you know. They're all a bit posh for me, apart from Jack, like, because he's a good Welsh boy, isn't he? But other than that, I find, you know, they're a nice bunch. But I'm a little bit... Ooh. Did Mr John show you how to use your pit pan? Yes. Did you ignore him on purpose? Pardon? Did you ignore him on purpose? No, I just found it easier to like that. Right. So when you come up and you squash your little fingers and you're crying for money, will it be easier then? No, I, I guess not. There's a reason why Mr Jones showed you how to use a pit pan. OK, OK. This job's not easy. Just make sure it's done right. Yes, Mr Bradford. Right. Shape the the power on the face. Oh, right, gather everything up, children. The power's off across Blind Avon, with welcome implications. Children, I have bad news for you. School has ended for the day. <laughs> and it's good news for the women who can go home early. <laughs> I don't know the extent of the power outage in the pit. Could well be that our ventilation is down, so we're in danger of black damps if you follow me. 
Power cuts were an ever-present threat in wartime, and underground could be lethal. There was often no backup ventilation, so if the fans stopped, carbon monoxide or black damp would build up. Miners could suffocate within minutes. The men of Stack Square make a calm exit from the mine. The Bevan boys panic. How come we got to come out? If the power goes well, off, gas fills up in the mine. So we need to get out the whole mine. I think so. Does this happen often? It won't ignite, but you can't breathe it in because you'll be dead. Yeah. Serious, yeah. yeah. Well, we'll leave you behind. Oh my God, we're not joking, man. Don't rush, but don't hang about. Hurry up, guys. Can't stay down here long. Go, you right, mate? I like to live, man, I would. It's quite urgent we had to get out there pretty fast, didn't we? Fastest we've moved since we've been here. Yeah. <laughs> but I tell you what, uh, no way I was going to stay in there for long. Shame that we can't get our work done that we need to get done, though. No, do we miss our bonus? The coal miners miss their bonus and we get a hard time off of them. Next time we go down there, we're going to have to work twice as hard, aren't we? Yeah. Spoil them. Another day at the coal mine. The power cuts left everyone out of pocket. It's an anxious walk home. And a bad day is only going to get worse. Rose is in a dark mood. No electricity. How are the kids? Fire's gone out in the bedroom, boys, because I've taken so long doing shopping. There you are. What? Is in the chicken pen? The pigs are in the chicken pen. It's my dad. Oh, it's my dad. Evacuee Leah gets her first letter from home. Thousands of children were evacuated from southeast England in 1944 to escape Hitler's flying bombs. Often rehoused hundreds of miles away, homesickness was a common problem. <laughs> After events of the day, the boys have one thing on their mind, relaxation. Well, I'm going to bed for an hour. Let's run a wash. Rose has other ideas. I'm really disappointed in you. I'm really disappointed with you. I honestly thought we were getting somewhere. I've been so proud of you and I've even been bragging you up. But I came in this morning, that meat was left in here, so how do I wash your pots for you to have hot water? Oh, it's all kicking off in the bed, boys. Oh. And he can walk off if he wants to walk off. Spike brat. That little bugger. I've really gone out of my way for that. And every day I go in there, I do their breakfast dishes for them, I clean the floor, I do the fire, I keep the fire going, and I make sure that they've got piles of hot water ready for when they come home from work. They walked off. Basically, Rose is a really nice woman. She's really friendly. She does us jobs and stuff, you know. And then um, we get up late. We don't have enough time to do the stuff that we usually do in the morning for her. And then she comes in at the end of the day after we've just had a really, really hard day at work and starts having a go at us. It takes two seconds just to tidy up. I had to walk out because I was just about to have a go at her because I'm not having that. Getting a bit stressed out, but... Unlike Chaz, Rory decides to swallow his pride. I don't know how the other lads are doing about it, but I have come to apologise myself. You know, me and Charlie ended up sort of finishing cooking at one o'clock in the morning to eat and all that, and so we're in the bed very late. And, you know, this morning we're in a rush to get out. And we're not trying to justify anything about, you know, we should have done it earlier on during the day, tidy but up thank you, at least you have come to see. You're welcome. Give me a hug. <laughs> Can't reach you, darling. The coach. Call house coach. Call house coach. coach. There you go. Thank you, Rory. Thank You're you. You're very welcome. That's because that's all it needs. As night draws in, the power's still out. Under cover of darkness, Annie and Rory do little to silence the gossips. There was once a small boy called Harry who hated to wash his mouth. Good night. No talking. It's by candlelight that an uneasy peace descends over Stack Square, full to bursting. In the next coal house, a new munitions mission. The explosives can be very dangerous. 
The pigs make themselves at home. And it's boiling point at the mine. I don't get paid for capitalism. I get paid for working on the coal pit. What's for this?